This is the game for Bastian Schweinsteiger, the oldest member of this midfield. He's 25. Whoa! Everyone else is younger. Welcome to Reminding You Why You Love Football, an award-winning podcast from Mundial. My name is Seb White. I am the co-founder of Mundial and today's host. And to my right, I've got my co-producer, Tommy Stewart. And to my left, Mundial Associate Editor, Asad Raza. If you're new, welcome. If you're a local, you're definitely thinking, where the bloody hell are Owen and James? <laughs> where are they? Where are they? Help, help. Uh, where, yeah. are <laughs> where are you? <laughs> exactly. Where are you? <laughs> well, they are on international duty <laughs> in the Big Apple. The Big the Apple. The city that never sleeps. London. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that city definitely <laughs> definitely falls asleep yeah, around 9pm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 24-hour city, my ass. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. they are in New York at the Kicking and Screaming Festival talking about the brilliant LA Wolves documentary that we did. So they're out in New York. So it's just us three today. Uh, I mean, I hope that's not too disappointing for you. Um, let's just say we're not at all jealous that they're out in New York having fun. Nah. Not at all. No. Not at all. So we're going to shake off that envy and we're going to get cracking and we're going to remind you, lovely lot, why you love football. Whew. Coming in strong, Sabby. On the day that this podcast is released is an incredible day of football birthdays. An incredible. Maybe the best. If you know of any better ones, please let us know. Because I'm going to reel off who is celebrating their birthday today. Go on. Ronaldinho. Oh. He's all right. <laughs> Jordi Alba. Decent, yeah. Even yeah. better. One a few things, yeah. Even, even better. Anton Griezmann. Oh, yeah. Oh, my boy crush. Your there boy you crush, yeah. Exactly. And Brian Clough. Oh. He's no longer with us, but... That is four greats. Now, young man, young man. What a, day, what a day, what a day. But something else very important happened on this day in 1987. A certain Dutchman Ooh. called Rude Hullet signed for AC Milan. My now, why is that more important than the birthdays of some footballing greats? Well, I'll tell you why, Tommy. And I'll tell you why, Assad. Because Rude Hullet... Is the cover star Yay! of the new issue of Mundial. Look at him. Beautiful in that an amazing kit. When Owen and James are back, we'll talk to them in more detail about the magazine because it's been quite it's been quite the journey, but it's been a lot of fun. So um yeah, we'll wait for that for next week. But in the meantime, go and order it, get ready, and then we'll talk about it again in the future. Let's do it. Amen. So yeah, Rude Hullet joined ACM in 1987. He's on the front cover, of the latest issue of Mundial Mag please go and buy it at mundialmag.com. And we can keep on doing this award-winning podcast, which is 4.9 on Apple. It is. Five star on Spotify. Yeah, baby. And part of the ACAS Creator Network. Right, let's get on with the show. I think we should. Let's get crack a boys. Ooh. Is that something the kids say? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just something I say. Yeah. <laughs> Thought so. He's an old kid, isn't he? We've discussed old this soul before. Yeah, the old yeah. soul asset. The oldest kid we know. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Ed, play that bloody music. Adventures in Clubland. Yes. <laughs> Adventures in Clubland. Indian summers. Last chance saloons. And loans. Well, 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 have we got one for you. We are going to August 2006. Asad, just quickly tell me how old you were then. 2006? Uh... Oh, I just turned seven. Just <laughs> turned seven. seven Brilliant. Years old. Fucking hell. Incredible. Just turned seven. How old uh, were you, Sam? I was a good four or five years out of uni. Yes, 20, well, 27. Just about to turn 27. So I'm 20 uh, years older than this bugger. 20 years old? God. Yeah. I was 16. There you are. There's a Prime of life. There's a generation yeah. between us all. Of. We're going back. Assad was doing different things to what Tommy was doing, and I said <laughs> oh, he was we, doing different things. We might things. be doing similar things. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to the third tier of English football. Third tier of English football. We are going to Market Town oh, in the West Country where are we going? called Yeovil. Oh. And because I'm in charge this week, we're talking about Marcus Stewart at Yeovil Town. Of course we bloody are. Now, look, I know what you're thinking. Marcus Stewart at Yeovil Town, adventure in clubland. This bloke's <laughs> talked about Mark Hughes, Tino Espria, <laughs> Oliver Bierhoff. How the fuck does Marcus Stewart fit into all this? It's a good question. It's a good question. Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Firstly, it's a last chance saloon. It's a loan and it's an Indian summer. Yeah. My God. That fits the adventure in Club Lambry. That's a, that's a bingo. That's yeah. a, that, that is a bingo. Yes, very good. <laughs> I also think as well, uh, obviously it's a subject I can talk with uh, 
with a lot of freedom and passion and affection. But what hopefully will become apparent is, I think it raises a couple of really interesting points. For fans of smaller clubs like myself, uh, oh, I know there's loads of them, we see them on the Discord, we see them in the comments, but also fans of all football, because I really do think my retelling of this and the certain things that will come off the back of it will remind you why you love football. There'll be some people, and we know we have listeners all around the world going, who the fuck is Mark? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I mean that in the best, in the nicest possible way, you know. Well, I, I mean, I would say, even before we started, put some respect on the man's name. Well, uh, exactly. Because you're, well, I'm sure you're about to tell us well, about his illustrious career pre Pre, yeah. Let's just forget about this before he hen ends up at Yeovil. <laughs> but back in 2000 and 2001 season, Marcus Stewart is the second top scorer in the Premier League. Yeah. Ipswich Town. He takes Ipswich Town, who have just been promoted into European football, essentially. Obviously, he, he spearheads them, shall we they say. Came, they, actually, they came, came fourth. Fourth or fifth, I think fourth it was. Fifth, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't see that happening today. No, no, you do not. You no. do not. And so, their first season. First season after Oh, yeah, promotion, straight in. Yeah. Straight in. George Ni Burley. 19 goals, right? Yeah. Wait, 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 what? Yeah, 19 first goals. season. First season, season in, the, in the Premier League. And they went to Europe. Not in the oh. Premier League forever, but no, 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 first no, no. season. As they, in, like, they'd come yeah. up. No, yeah, they've just been promoted. Fucking I remember hell. it. So it's probably the first season, like, I'm really cognizant about God. football and, like, yeah. getting geeky uh, about yeah, it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, yeah, as good as, as good as he was, and the fact that he scored 19 goals. So he was only four. So, Assad, I know you're only seven, but who do you think might have been top scorer that season? 2000, 2001. How old are you then, Assad? 2001. Um, I am... I've just one. turned what? No, yeah, I'm one to two. I'm one to two. He's in the one to two area. But, so Asad's not going to know this. I, I, no, no, it, but let me guess. He might. I guess. Let me guess. He might. If I right. told you it was a, a previous adventuring adventure in Clublander, is it Jimmy Floyd? It's Jimmy Floyd Whee! with 23 goals. Seb, eat your fucking words. He did well. <laughs> he did well, didn't he? Fair play, Asad. I mean, fair it's play. on the script. <laughs> but I didn't so, see it because I didn't even know that. To be fair, he doesn't read it. He doesn't. It's coming in freestyle. So Marcus Stewart is deserving of being spoken about in these circles, I would argue. Second top scorer in the Premier League one season. There was talk about him potentially playing for England, but he didn't quite didn't quite get there. He ends up staying at Ipswich for a bit longer. He goes to Sunderland, then he goes to Bristol City. But wherever he goes, he's well-liked and he scores a lot of goals. I would say, apart from Bristol City, it doesn't quite work out for him there. Obviously, he became famous originally, Marcus Stewart, for playing for Bristol Rovers and scoring goals on the blue and white half of the city, or blue and white quarters, should that be. But... He's 34. It's a last chance saloon. He's looking for a loan and he's hoping for an Indian summer. Enter oh. Yeovil Town. Enter Yeovil Town. Now, Yeovil Town, we'd only been a league club for three years. Only three years. All of our best players and manager had been steadily cherry picked over the course of that year because <laughs> we, we were, we were yeah. decent, but we were a League One side. And suddenly, we've got a player. We've just signed a player, even if it is just on loan, who only a few years ago was scoring winners at Anfield. Yeah. Now, on that same day, that uh, Ipswich beat Liverpool 1-0 and Marcus Stewart scored the winner. Yeovil were performing FA Cup heroics, and uh, as, as they often do, but away at Blackpool. So we were non-league. So our paths should never really have crossed. But as it is, 2006, Marcus Stewart is playing for our club. Now, the reason, this is why I'm talking about Marcus Stewart playing for Yeovil and eventually in Clubland. When your club, especially when you're a fan of a smaller club, signs a player that was on match of the day a few years ago, scored goals for fun. When that, when your club signs a player of that quality, it's, it's almost like giddy. You get, and you almost just can't quite believe it, you know. Well, I remember when I was going to Shrewsbury Town a lot around yeah. probably the same sort of period as that. Well, yeah. no, well, no, more that earlier period when he was at Ipswich. So, early two thousands yeah. when we signed Ian Wong and Nigel Jempson. From Forest? From Forest. I don't know if we got them directly from there, but, but they, I remembered them from... Ex, well, from that's where they were famous, ex-Forest, yeah. And... They were in their mid thirties. They were wildly out of shape, especially Nigel Jensen, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who's, who later who scored two goals against yeah, yeah. Everton in the FA Cup third round, famously, which yeah. I've spoken about before briefly on this podcast. But Ian Wone, oh my yeah. god, slow as fuck, but a bit like how Owen was describing Jan Mulvey at Swansea. Yeah, yeah. well, ex a wand of a left what foot. What a great a wand of a left foot technique. And what a great example. Just. 10 yards ahead in his head when I was 9, 10, 11, young football fan who was all I cared about was football. Just watch Ian Wone. Yeah, yeah. Just watch him. Yeah, yeah. Because you're not going to see that much down the game. Exactly. That. Someone of that class and experience who just plays football the right way. Which leads me lovely into 
Marcus Stewart playing for Yeovil. Now, he he scored on his debut against Swansea, but it wasn't just what he did going forward. It was him on the pitch. He had a touch of class. He had a brilliant touch. Of course he did. Yes, he couldn't run as much as he as he used to. He couldn't get in behind the striker, but he would come back. And I just remember little things. like I can p- genuinely picture him at Northampton away. He's coming back from a corner, coming back for a corner to defend. And he's like p- trying to pull the pieces together because this man knows football inside out. He's played at the very top level. Yeah. He scored at Anfield. He knows his shit. And he's pulling the young players into position and stuff like that. And you're like... You can. It's so obvious when players when players are so much better up there. It's so obvious, especially at, especially at that level. You know, yeah. the third tier of English football. So he just added something, and again, it was a genuine like Marcus Stewart is playing up front for Yeovil yeah. Town. I was, I was going to say, did the fans and players know it? Because that's just reminding me of when, obviously for the hat trick, I researched about Stanley yeah, yeah. Bowles, and when he went to Brentford, which were a few leagues below. Yes, and people. Yes. There was an interview with on BBC where the the interviewer was like. Oh, Stanley, you know, you used to play for in the, in the first division with PPR. Yeah. And now you're, you know, playing below your level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you feel like a player of your ability doesn't, is wasting himself there? Yeah, and he yeah. was just like, no, uh, the fans love me. Great example. The players like love this. me. Great example, yeah. And, you know, I just give them a show and every week. Fun. And the, I, I have fun and I give them a show every week and they love me. Love that. That's yeah. a great example. And Jan Mulby is another great example. So... That's why we're talking about him on Adventures in Clubland because it's great when these players drop lower than than perhaps people would expect and they do add something. It doesn't always happen, but you know, when it does, when it does, it's bloody great. And I've spoken about his goal against uh, Nottingham Forest. So in episode seven, and again, this is a reminder that all our podcasts are pretty much timeless. Because in episode seven, I yeah. talk about Marcus Stewart's goal for Yeovil against Nottingham Forest in the playoffs being the most joy and the best, the biggest moment of my footballing supporting life, right? That's the highlight, right? That's the highlight. But, and I can I can still picture it, I can smell it, I, I know exactly where I am when I hear the name Marcus Stewart. I'm in that stand at City Ground, going berserk, utterly berserk. But, and again, another reason why I brought him into Adventures in Clubland this week, I listened to an interview with him, which was a whole 90-minute interview by the brilliant Yeovil Town uh, podcast uh, called Glover's Cast, which isn't just a brilliant Yeovil Town podcast, it's a brilliant football podcast. They do great work. Now, he said one thing, that I, and I've in, I'm very unfortunate, I've interviewed a lot of footballers from the top to the bottom to in between, wherever. But he said something that was just, that was genuinely like insightful and incredible and it actually made me feel quite emotional. The Yeovil fans that were interviewing and the Yeovil fans interviewing him are talking to him and saying, what did you feel like when you scored that goal against Nightmare Forest? Now, to me, to the people that are asking him, to all the Oval fans listening in, they're probably going, that's one of the best moments of my life. It's one of the best goals of my life, right? And Marcus Stewart just said, look, I scored 254 goals, right? Don't get me wrong. In terms of importance, it's probably in the top 10. And then there's a little part of me going, oh, no, he doesn't, you know, why doesn't he share? How doesn't he share that? That mentalness. But then he going on to say, quite rightly, and it, it was it was it was really beautiful actually. He said, Every single time I scored a goal, it felt the same in that moment. In that moment, it felt the same. Whether that was me playing for my under 15s team, whether that was me playing for Yeovil, wherever, that moment when the ball hits the back of the net or goes across the line, that always feels the same and has always felt the same. And I was like, just as good, yeah. you you could see it, and it's not exactly. like a not a just, robotic thing. No, no, it's no. It's just as good every time. Yeah. And he says the importance of the goal, whether the team, the f- the game, the moment, the standard that of goal, is a, the standard. It's a sliding scale. The importance yeah. of the goal is will always vary. But he said the feeling won't. Yeah. The feeling will just. And you just think this man has scored two hundred and fifty four professional goals, right? He remembers and he cherishes every single one, yeah. which I thought, fuck. That's amazing. I love that. That yeah. is amazing, isn't it? And 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 that's why he also kept giving so far so but long into that, his career. That's yeah. also a that's also just a, a natural born goal scorer, I would Well, yeah, like someone who's yeah, yeah. not because if you ask uh, I don't know, let's say Jamie Carragher, this, who scored yeah. about four goals, the same question. <laughs> he will remember every all detail of, about every goal. Exactly. All, all of them own goals, but, but that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. But that's someone who was born to score goals, yeah, yeah. I would say. But I love the fact, so wherever he played and wherever, whoever he did it, whenever he did it, a goal meant so much to him. And I just think sometimes we there's so much stuff around football. There's so much chatter and talk. And I was just like, 
boil it down to its absolute most simple. Uh, when uh, that ball hits the back of the net, the elation the player feels, the teammates feel, the fans feel. God, I just remember that sometimes. And it, it, and again, the importance. And again, I go back to being a fan of a small club. We don't always have trophies. You don't always have promotions, but you have moments. Yeah. yeah. And those yeah. moments yeah. mean something to all these different people. And it still means something to someone like Marcus Stewart, you know. That's all well and good. And that is a brilliant story, right? But I think listening to this interview, it put it even more in perspective, right? Because I think we've mentioned, as we mentioned, Marcus, before, we mentioned it a couple of years ago, he got diagnosed with MND. And oh my God, his unrelenting positivity during the interview is something, again, which separate from football, but just an outlook on life. Because he introduced himself and was saying how he was doing and stuff like this. And he says, don't be sad. Two years down the line, I've still got my voice. I've got my mobility. I've got a left hand, which to be fair is not very good. I've got a right hand, which is decent. So I consider myself a lucky, unlucky one. Oh, wow. And you just think, what a bloke. What That's a man. Beautiful. And he's on the staff. He's back at Yeovil now, actually. And again, this is, is it? Yes, yeah, he's back. He's on the staff. Nice. Wonderful. And he was even caught doing some bits in training. So he's still got that mobility. I bet stuff. he's still the best player, technically. <laughs> well, some, this is one of the lads who was doing the interview made the joke about it. But <laughs> he sort of said, no, 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 I can't run. He can't. He said, I could do some Masters football, but I can't run. But. He's obviously dealing with something unbelievable, but he's using his profile as someone who has been second top scorer in the Premier League, has scored one of the best goals in a football club's history, has taken the team to Wembley like he did with Yeovil. He's using that profile to raise awareness of MND and he's going to be doing a walk called March of the Day with loads of players, managers, football people just to raise awareness of MND with the Derby Rimmer Foundation because he's, he's got to know Stephen Derby who obviously suffers from MND. And he's got to know him really well. So they're raising money for the Derby Rimmer Foundation. We'll put all the links in the description. Great. Please take a moment to go and support a brilliant man taking part in a brilliant cause. But um, I th hopefully, in amongst all that, you know, the passion for scoring, the, the beauty of scoring a goal, and the positivity in life, hopefully, I think I've confounded the doubters, and that was an investors in club land worth doing. 100%. Oh, 100%. That's incredible i think anyway. seb that was beautiful and and you know you can talk about the team you support you can talk about the players you love on this he might not yeah. be an iconic player but he's iconic to you yeah, i yeah. think that's worth yeah and now you, yeah you i mean obviously yeah you were seven and now you now you know all about marcus Mate. stewart <laughs> i've learned so much especially because i didn't read the script before yeah. i came out. <laughs> but no exactly we well, hope people enjoyed Lovely. that um, and yeah, we'll we'll have to move on to the next section where Tommy's just going to talk about Man United. No, no, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. <laughs> David Beckham. Yeah, yeah. Owen, Owen is going to ruin the day that he left all three of us Get in the shirt. Show. Where's my Andy Cole shirt? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm Charlie Cooper. You might recognise me from BBC Show This Country, but I'm here to tell you how much I love Mundial magazine. For me, it's the fanzine of football documenting the best of football culture forever. I'm very proud to admit I've been a long-term subscriber of Mundial for years now. Um, but if you subscribe, you don't just get the magazine, right? You get loads of other perks, too many to mention, in fact. So join Club Mundial at mundialmag.com. It is. Puff, puff. Midfield blunt rotation. <laughs> puff, puff. Daddy. Midfield blunt rotation. This is where we talk about a delicious midfield from football past and discuss its many merits and have, you know, have some stories from around it. And at the end, we work out whether it's a nightmare or a dream blunt rotation. Asad Raza, who the bloody hell are we talking about here? <laughs> well, friends, we're going to 2010. <gasps> South Africa. Yeah. Nice. We're going to the World Cup quarterfinals. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Germany 4, Argentina 0. Wow. And a midfield that comprises of Sami Khedira. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Liked him. Yeah, yeah. Lovely player. Bastian yeah. Schweinsteiger. Man Bastion. United legend. <laughs> Man United legend. <laughs> I liked him because he was called Bastian. <laughs> and his, and his oh, surname. Oh, like you. And like his, a, a Bastian of free speech. Yeah, yeah. White, And a pig farmer like Bastian. <laughs> That's what his surname means, pig farmer. Um, Thomas, Thomas Muller. Oh, he's a good lad. Beautiful laugh, man. Be Beautiful man. My Ma favorite, maybe my favorite non-Man United footballer ever. A contender for my favorite non-Man United footballer ever, Messer Ozil. Ooh, okay, yeah, yeah. Ooh. what a footballer. Yeah, yeah. Great uh, footballer. And, yeah. hang on, another one. 
We got we got five. It's just a five man. It's a five man midfield. Oh! The, uh, see, when the midfield front rotation goes to five man, I get excited oh. because that's that, bloody good on its own. Stop there. We have got a great format. Oh, there's there's so much. More well, we're come. putting we're, we're putting some we're sprinkling some extra stuff St- in it. We're, we're yeah, getting yeah. we're getting an extra skin. <laughs> Salt like the bay. Yeah. Oh, there's another one coming. Roll, roll up another one. <laughs> Sorry, that was awful. Ah! One of the worst things I've ever in. said. It's <laughs> Because he's for the benefit of the listeners, if you're not watching my, YouTube, my, my sphincter's just contracted. <laughs> that should be the opener for the episode. My sphincter's just contracted. My sphincter's I'm contracted. So I said that. Why have I said uh, that? And he sprinkled, he sprinkled his fingers. <laughs> there we go. Wanker. What a wanker! What a wanker! Man number five. Gone. Gone. Sorry. Is Lucas Podolski? Oh, oh, in a yeah, yeah, yeah. A slightly wider position wider on the player, midfield. Yeah, scorer yeah. of exclusively Thunder Bastards. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. I do want to do a quick side note to talk about the opponents. Diego Armando Maradona's Argentina. Oh, I whoa. Mean, ring the bell. Ring, ring the, the bell. Diego ding, bell. Ding, 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 ding. I mean, ding, ding, you, Diego. This has been spoken about before how mad he was at the 2010 World Cup, you know, being yep. told, being told like, he was it was it was like the words of god had come into his head and that they were going to win the world cup and he picked that journeyman left back because <laughs> yeah. he saw him in a dream which isn't a, but like one of my favorite anecdotes god. carlos tevez misses a penalty in training mm. and so as a punishment for some reason he makes tevez go in goal and then he gets himself and all the coaches to play a game of red ass where every single member of the squad fires a football <laughs> at him Ah. Every single member of the squad fires a football at all the coaches plus Tevez. And uh, to bring it back to midfielders, Javier Mascherano <laughs> smacks Diego Maradona in the back of the head. I'll try and find a clip of it. Wow, I didn't know this. It's fucking crazy. It's absolutely Excellent. crazy. Yeah. How old are you in 2010? <laughs> I'm 11. You're 11. So this is... Formative. You're formative. 11. This yeah, is yeah. your formative World Cup, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just out of interest, again, as someone who grew up, went to Naples remembers 86 just about, remembers Diego Maradona being spoke about in these hushed tones, right? Your first experience or football experience with Diego Maradona is as a manager of Argentina. What yeah. the... F- I'd seen the yeah, what did you re- think about that? I'd seen the highlights and read about him because my dad got me a big book of like, like you know, yeah, yeah, football yeah. legends when I was like yeah, nine, yeah. right? But to see him at that tournament just yeah. quite fat yeah, yeah. with like that big rotund silver, but rotund, sure. silver but the hair Stocky, I the hair say. and the facial hair slick I have never seen a manager look better than that like and the sunnies he would wear to press conferences and stuff like and that and he had a little little silver tinge didn't yeah. he, he did, just a yeah. little bit at that yeah. point so he came out and like insulted Pele and I think it was Franz Beckenbauer again uh, yeah. <laughs> again yeah he's done that a few times yeah 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 but, well, and, then, and then like a couple days after because apparently they'd insulted him him. But a couple of days after, it turns out neither of them had. And then he comes out in a press conference and he's like, I'd like to apologize to Franz Beckenbauer, but I will not be apologizing to Pele, <laughs> which is a very, Incredible. very funny thing. We have paid I mean, due respect to yeah. the manager. To the great man. But let's get back to the mu- yeah. midfield man. This midfield is great. Come on, quickly, give us, give us some. Give us I some, mean, give us some sugar. My, my God. I mean, they, Argentina are swept away by this German midfield. This is the game for Bastian Schweinsteiger. Uh, you know, the oldest member of this midfield, he's 25. He's only 25. He's a, Whoa. Everyone else is younger. I think Ozil's 20. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's only 25 at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ozil's like 20, 21. Wow. Kadera's 23. Podolski's 24. Young like, Bucks. And, young Bucks. And this midfielder just, uh, well, pretty much I mean, midfield. They just hammered England, haven't they? Yeah, 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 in, yeah, yeah. The, in the previous round. Well, I was 20, and I remember being in Malia watching that England-Germany yeah. game. Well, Lampard yeah. scored. It wouldn't have changed anything. Whether he, you know, it wouldn't. Yeah. It, they, it still wouldn't they, they still would have. They still would have destroyed. My God, but that, that was, was dominant. to briefly <laughs> to briefly mention Thomas Muller. Everyone t- thinks of him as a smiley, jokey man who tells bad jokes at press conferences. He was a sadistic fucker in this tournament. He went for the kill against England and also in this game. Yeah, yeah. Again, a sort of positionless German field because at one point Kadira would be pushing up and he's a six. Yeah. So you talk about Kadira. Tell Kadeira. us a bit about Kadira. Yeah, a very classy, elegant man oh, who just sits... Beautiful. He came in... Michael Balak was supposed to be captain of this side. He travelled over anyway, but he was ruled out through injury because he got fouled against Port, playing against Portsmouth. Um, I was at that cup final. Really? Yes, I was working. Yes, he did by... He I got, think it was Prince Boateng. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got... So he got, he got... He was out for oh, the tournament. That's how... Man, he... So Michael Balak was supposed to be in that team. So and this is a midfield, but could have had Balak in Balak as well. in, but Kadira... 
Kadira. He's number six. Schweinsteiger is number seven, which I love. As a central yeah. midfielder, wearing the number seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Podolsky is eight. And then Ozil is 10. It's just... <laughs> love that. So tell us about uh, Ozil or Podolsky. Being 11 years old, it is... I'd never seen anyone... I'd never seen Kaka properly. Yeah. I was just too young. I was seven, eight when he was good, yeah. he was dicking Man United, right? Yeah. Ozil was like no one I'd ever seen before. A guy who could, who was so, you know, thin and like like little waif like. Yeah. And he could just shrug off players like you know, twice his size. Yeah. He'd play these passes, especially in that knockout game against England, but here as well, where he would be turning towards his own box and then suddenly just play a pass. 40 or 50 yards into the preferred foot and right onto the foot of the player he wanted to send it mm. to. And I just... An old school number 10. An old school number. But I didn't know that at the time. He just yeah. looked... Because like there wasn't many of him about to. and there's not no, been many not, since. Not many since. Lucas Podolski, who I remember from Euro 2008 as someone who just scored screamers because he took out a Turkey team that I wanted to get through to the next round. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. And funnily enough, Kadira comes off in this match and who does who replaces him? Tony Cruz. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Tony Cruz very quickly. Uh, he is a man, and I, I don't know if this has been written about. Maybe I should maybe I should write about it, or maybe yeah. we should do it on the podcast at some point. But Tony Cruz, a man who I just remember noticing over the years, who loves things from Stoke on Trent. <laughs> the man's favourite singer from my uh, memory. I remember him saying on Twitter, Robbie Williams, the man's yeah. favourite sportsman yeah. is Phil the Power <laughs> Taylor. Oh. Both Stoke legends. Wow. What the fuck? Yeah. That's Tony Cruz, the great <laughs> mate, one of the top five or ten centre midfielders of all time. Yeah, maybe. yeah. yeah he's, oh, he's up there now, hasn't he? Got to be, hasn't he? He has to be. And he's been, you know, and he's been pretty much wearing the same style of boot for the last ten yeah, years yeah, as well, which is well, it is the, it's the exact same boot, isn't the exact, it? Exact, yeah. The Adi Pure, the Adi Pure one. The, one at the is top. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same one. He's been wearing the same one for ten years, so much so that Adidas stopped making those ones and made a new version of the Adi Pure for him. Well, what a classic midfield that is. But this is midfield blunt rotation, so we do have to decide whether it's dream or nightmare. I want to give my overall opinion on it. Go on. I, I'm ready you, to say what I. Yeah. What Go on I, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying it's nightmare. I. Because, yeah. because Thomas Muller, like I briefly alluded to before, one of my favourite footballers ever. Right laugh. I love him. I think he's great. The rest of them, there's nothing that's really... Bastian Schweinsteiger seems a nice guy. Kadir, but they, you know what they remind me of a little bit? Go on. You know how James said that uh, Borough midfield is a bit like the good-looking lads on holiday, <laughs> Mr. Seal, your girlfriends. They are a little bit like... What, you could imagine? They're all pretty handsome lads. These are all going to... The the German score around the corner in half. <laughs> where I live, where I live, got, is, where got, I live has got a huge German population and there's actually a German school. You're imagining, Ra I'm seeing Ralph, see Ralph Lauren's turned up yeah, cream yeah, chinos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Polo necks, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just Mr. Silly Girlfriends. That's, yeah. I'm not vibing with them. You know what? Other than Thomas Muller. You know what? I sort of agree with you, even though I picked it. Look, yeah, yeah. I would love to have Honestly, I'm going to buck the trend because you would think Ozil would be a nightmare. I think having a DMC with Mesut Ozil is something I really want to do. Me and him, <laughs> me and him would have a lot to talk about. Me, a deep, That's a deep, meaningful chat for those who are ancient. Um, and and then, chaos. Was, uh, yeah, I didn't was, know what DMC I was. I thought it was that bit Run. that split um, South Korea and North Korea. I thought it was... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a drug that Joe Rogan did. <laughs> you ever done DMT? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm veering towards top deck of the bus at Ham. <laughs> you know, just being quite f funny and enjoyable and fun, but not going that extra mile and just, you know. It's an all right. I wouldn't yeah, say yeah. it's dream or nightmare. It's it's, it's... a really... <laughs> 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 Mare blunt rage rotation. Basically, basically, <laughs> if we're saying that North Korea's nightmare blunt <laughs> and South Korea's dream blunt, <laughs> yeah. this is the DMZ, yeah, 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 the demilitarized yeah, yeah. zone. Look at that, eh? Look at that callback. You don't get that on <laughs> rest is football. <laughs> Right then. Whoa, 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 whoa. We, Can we support these. We support these. We support these now. We support. We support these now. Lovely. <laughs> What's this section called again? <laughs> 
This, no, sec- no, no, no. this section the is called We Support These Now. And this is where we highlight things, people, times, events, all sorts of things, anything that we feel that other people should know more about. Now, this is one quite close to my heart. Tommy Stewart, take it away. Bake them away, toys. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, he does I, that every time. I, I know, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. And I get it every single time. And yeah, more yeah. and more listeners, there's there's one or two every week who go, Just were you referencing Simpsons? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got yeah, it, you yeah. got it, you got this it. This man's got a Simpsons tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I hate that tattoo. It's the oh, one. it's a good one. It's fun. It's too big. It's too big. Yeah, yeah. So, Seb, yes, this is very close to your heart. It's, it's quite close to mine as well. It is non-league day. <gasps> A couple of days after this goes out, which yeah. is, uh, so this goes out on Thursday, non-league days this Saturday. Don't worry if you listen to your podcasts. I know a lot of people do it on their Sunday run or yeah. their, their Monday morning commute. Yeah, A lot of people like to save up podcasts. Don't worry. It's not too late. Number one, non-league day. It's a really big cause. It's uh, done with uh, Prostate Cancer UK. Yeah. Jeff Stellan is involved. So that happens every year. But also... Non-league football happens every week. Every week, almost every day. Week. And you know what? <laughs> almost every day. I <laughs> wish. Oh, every bloody every wish. day is non-league day. <laughs> Seb's ass. Very good point, Assad. Assad. Go, you good? Yeah, he's good, isn't he? <laughs> Go around White's house any day of the week, <laughs> and he'll be hanging out. Back non-league, non-league day. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. <laughs> but um, I, me and you both love non-league football, Seb. I, I of yeah. course, have spoken many times on this parish about my affinity, uh, my love, my passion of Westage Green West. Charlton. Yeah. West uh, and you with your uh, yeah. well, Yeovil, Hamrich, and Rich, whoever, yeah, yeah. what terrible, yeah, whoever it is this week, yeah, whoever it is this week, yeah, Man United, no, no, shh. <laughs> <laughs> Why listen to me go on about it uh, when you can listen to the founder of non-league day, which is James Doe. And I've written so much down about what he does and why he did this, but he actually explains it very concisely in this lovely little voice note. So, Ed. If we could hit it. Hit it, Ed. Bake them away. Hi, I'm James Doe, the founder of Non-League Day, an event I set up in 2010 as a social media experiment after being inspired by a pre-season trip to Devon to watch Queen's Park Rangers play at Tavistock. It has now grown to become an annual part of the football calendar, backed by the Premier League and many of its member clubs, and most importantly, the non-league clubs themselves and the fans who turn up on the day. Always scheduled to coincide with an international break, Non-League Day provides a platform for clubs to promote the importance of affordable, volunteer-led community football, while giving fans across the country the chance to show support for their local non-league side. Many non-league clubs are almost exclusively volunteer-run, with money taken at the turnstiles, often funding thriving youth setups, and also projects and facilities which are of benefit to the whole community. The level of skill on offer at non-league grounds might not be the same as that at the Etihad or Stamford Bridge, But there are other sides to the experience from which the smaller club will always win, hands down. The vast majority of games still kick off at three. Ticket prices are realistic. You can often stand and drink anywhere in the ground and will always be guaranteed a warm welcome by people who run their clubs for a love of the game. Can we just say, John, that the, Mr. Saying? Doe should do fucking audiobooks. His no, voice. His what, voice. what a voice. That, that is a beautiful voice. I would love to just... Yeah, that you could... Picture him on a calm story or something like yes. that. Yes. Your reaction when he said you could drink anywhere in the stands, <laughs> just like, Way. The non league day website has a very, very useful tool where you simply type in your postcode yep. and it will tell you you can do a five mile radius, a <gasps> 10 mile radius, Ooh. 20 mile body oh. radius. If you're Seb White, you can do a fucking 300, 500 mile <laughs> radius and see how many non league games you can get to across Europe within one day. Exactly. Instead, instead me and my brother, Rich, uh, who's an avid, he said this is the only podcast he listens to. Good lad, Richie Boy. So there will hopefully be a reel on Monday Owl's Instagram of me and my brother trying to get across as many matches within a 10 mile radius in Greater Manchester as we can on non league day. There are 14 matches. What I, you're saying is, how many can you do yeah, how many safely, do do? Yes, yes. safely, effectively, and efficiently? Yeah, so how many do you two think we can do of the 14? I'd quite like you to do, I'd like you to see if you can get five to five different grounds in. Yeah. yeah. I, You'd be happy with five? I am going to yeah. say like... Six it is them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but some of the games, just reading the names of these teams, I mean, this is reason alone to go and watch non-league football. 
We've got Main Road in Wally Range. If you don't want to go and watch Manchester City, if you're priced out of that, you can go watch Main Road, who have the same sort of colours and aesthetic as yeah, Man yeah, City, yeah. but it's just £5 to get in. You've got yeah. FC United and Manchester, who yeah. we know, like, a lot of you will know, a rebellion club yeah, yeah. against Man yeah, United. Yeah, yeah. When the Glazers came in in 2005, we're going to try and get to that. That's in Moston. I love that ground. I've been a few yeah. times before. Arvo in Oldham. Oldham's Arvo? a place. I, yeah, Oldham's a place. They've played West many a times. It's a place I Arvo. love playing cricket. Yeah, nice. Arvo. I play You're cricket in go... Oldham. Wait, what are you doing? This? Yeah, it sounds like it's, yeah, it's how Arvo. I'm... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I sat in his anac- anaconda yeah. in Arvo. In Arvo, yeah, exactly. <laughs> My brother goes to um, like college in Oldham. Yeah, I love Oldham. Play cricket yeah. there many a times. <laughs> Stockport Town, which apparently I read recently is the best place to live in the Northwest. So we'll be going to Stockport Town. The New Berlin. Trafford v 1874 Northwich in Trafford, obviously. And Staley Bridge versus Widness. I spent a lot of my 20s in Staley Bridge. Staley Vegas. Staley Vegas. Yes. There you go. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. There? I've been there a couple of times when I was, well, well one, obviously to watch football. You over the way. <laughs> it's a good ground. Yeah, it? it's a nice ground. Yeah. But yeah, and a couple of times on the, on the, the, Manchester to Staley Bridge, like Ale, Real Ale Trail or it's whatever it is. It got a little bit punchy. Live, sorry, yeah. lively, not punchy. That is pretty damn good. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens and I'm obviously looking forward to seeing you re- recap what, what happened. Go into it like a little bit more why, I, why I'm passionate about non-league day. It, it was there for me like during a really tough time in my life and, and a time when I was very disillusioned with Mourinho's Man United and I went to that. I, I still went to watch United a lot but then I found West Brom Charlton. I heard through them in like sort of mates who were going to gigs who sort of realised that we started talking about football, like you heard of this club, you heard this club. And I heard that the lads from Dutch uncles who my band church party played with a lot. I heard they went down to West Isbury and Shorten. And when I first started going, it was 40, 50 people sort of average. They now average about six, 700. Great. And that's, I was part of that, that movement, yeah. that movement that saw it swell. Yeah. From almost nothing. What James says there is per- is really good. The non-league clubs get behind it as well. And I know there was a there was a bit of a weird thing. When it first came about, loads of people were really sniffy, like, oh, I don't want City fans or I don't want these fans to come and just watch a game and then disappear for the next year. No, you do. Yeah, you, you do. do. You want them to come because they might come back and they might come back during the week. They might not come every week, but that's fine. But they might come three, four times a season. And then maybe the season after they might come more. They also might not. But why not? Get them in for the day, get them to spend some money, and it makes a huge difference. And we can't talk about non-league football, by the way. The spreadsheet, to end all spreadsheets, which we mentioned on episode four, Roberto Baggio and the Angels, and I remember the look over my laptop screen of seeing yours and James's faces lighting up as we talked about... Well, it's a spreadsheet of spreadsheets, isn't it? Yeah, it's like WikiLeaks, but for (laughs) non-league. It is. Peter Miller's uh, spreadsheet, and we will... We will share the link to this, but... It's the non-league promotion and relegation spreadsheet. So if you want to go and see a team try and stay up, if you want to go and see a team fighting for promotion, or even in the playoffs, because non-league playoffs, there's frigging loads of them at the end of April, May. You Get get down them, because honestly, it, it, you see football at its best. So what do we support now and always? Non-league league football. football. There you are. All right, it's that man Dave here. You may know me from such things as that Peter Crouch podcast, the BBC, and being all over the internet. I spend a lot of my time looking at numbers, and that's why sometimes I need to read some good old words. That's why I look forward to receiving The Hat Trick, a weekly football newsletter from Monday Owl. Stories about heroes and villains, love and hate, Last minute winners, mad shirts, all delivered to your inbox. Sign up to the hat trick today at mondaylmag.com. Right then, we will conclude proceedings on this week's episode of Reminding You I Love Football with our regular way to end ins and outs. And I get to decide whether they are ins and outs. So I am the judge, jury, and executioner. Um, and you are but, actually going to execute us after this. Yeah, yeah. there's no execution. Yeah. We know he's got some military tack back yeah, at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I did wonder why you brought a guillotine to the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, 
It was on order of the benevolent dictator who is no longer here. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, he's not no here today. <laughs> sorry. He's no longer with us. He's, he's yeah, been yeah. overthrown. It's a he's, coup d'etat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tommy Stewart, give me your in for this week. My in this week, Sebi, is vintage shops in Sheffield. So I was oh, I was thinking nice. maybe vintage shops in the north, but no. No. And I was discussing this with Assad, a, a traitor who left Manchester many years ago, <laughs> and, and I don't think he'll ever come back. Even Manchester is kind of veering towards London prices in, yeah, in yeah. the rent, uh, the vintage shops, the, the, the pints. Yeah, yeah. You, you, the fucking Northern Powerhouse bollocks. But anyway. We have got to save a lot of money for the stadium that everyone's going to... Fuck off. Uh, Fuck off. Uh, Anyone from London give me that. No, no, no. Yeah, He's no. fuming. He's oh, Olympic fuming. Park or Wembley. Oh. <laughs> Fuck you. Come on. Sorry. I went to Union Sheffield, and so I've yeah. still got a lot of mates Great there. Place to go. It's one of the best cities in the UK, in the world, I would argue. The Steel City. But... Uh, yeah, I went around the vintage shops. I said to my mate, who I was going to see there very recently, uh, you know what? I've not been around the record shops and the vintage shops in Sheffield for years because every time I go, it's just for a night out or for a gig, basically. Yeah, yeah. Went around the vintage shops and... Decked yourself out. You will see, if you watch the clips, if you watch this on YouTube, I've been complimented three times on this uh, very light sort of summer jacket I'm wearing. A, uh, a yellow Lacoste number. There's the little yeah. crocodile, yeah. the little metal crocodile. How much do you reckon this cost me? Well, in London, no question, no doubt about it, that's 100 notes. Yeah, yeah, 100 yeah, notes. 100 big ones. 120 probably. 45 fucking pounds. Yeah. Fuck me. This Ralph Lauren That's uh, That's easily, hat. that's easily 50, 50 quid. Yeah. Easily. Six panel stripey hat, uh, 20 pounds. I mean... You can't complain. We're that, going. We're going vintage shopping in. Me, uh, yeah, me and you. So too. a sixty-five pound in, in in part of the outfit. Yeah, talking of vintage shops in Sheffield. Shout out to Joe. Just off Ecky Road. Yes, I really used to go there in uni quite a lot. One of fashion's good guys. And I should shout out as well. Uh, my home city. I, I should shout out to Manchester ones that that yeah. aren't at ridiculous prices. Who are mates with Jojo? A uh, Bionic Seven. And bags of flavour. Regular, regular nice. purchaser. Bionic 7, bags of flavour, both brilliant. Assad, brilliant. what's your in? Mine is, and you like this, Seb, it's football themed. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Yeah, well, that's a bit presumptive, football, isn't it? Football themed bingo nights. I will like that. Football to be fair, yeah. you bingo. nailed it. It's so at, is that like, instead of doing clickety-click 66, you go, <laughs> Trent Alexander-Arnold, 66. <laughs> right, okay. The bingo is just bingo. Oh, but sorry. It's ah. at, I've been recently. I've been, well, I've been. I've been two or three times. Okay. Uh, Sporting Club de Londres or Sporting Lisboa. Yeah, yeah. In uh, near Westbourne Park in London. Yeah. They do a bingo night. It's a fan club. It's a Sporting Lisbon fan club in London. And while um, they're doing the bingo night, everyone's decked out in club gear. So they're all in Sporting Lisbon tracky. Sporting. So that's the football theme that yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. wearing stuff. It's not the number. But yeah, they're missing they're wearing, a trick here. They have like scarves over the bar and like wow. they have signed shirts and memorabilia on the walls and stuff. What it's great. Um, and that if you go and talk to them, they'll tell you all, all about we're doing this. The history of sport in Lisbon and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Assad, that is very much in, and we will be doing a Monday Owl bingo night at some point, maybe at Sporting Club Monday. And the reason this has come up, by the way, and the reason that Assad may have mentioned this was because I was outside the exterior of Sporting Club Londres the other day because, and this moves seamlessly, <laughs> seamlessly, this wasn't pre, pre, pre prepared, I tell you not. This moves seamlessly into my inn. My inn is boxing because I, two doors down from there, I there's a boxing gym. And I was invited by the very good people at boxing uh, clothing brand Real. Real Power of One is their Instagram handle. They invited me down for a boxing class. Now, I have never, ever put on a pair of boxing gloves. I have never, ever done anything boxing related i've been to a couple of gyms and filmed stuff in boxing gyms yeah. and made boxing small short boxing was that for work or for just work. uh no no that's <laughs> definitely for work just cruising around with a spare super time <laughs> but um i must thank owen blackhurst for this opportunity because he would have been taking this opportunity but he is um in the big apple and the city that never sleeps so i went along and thought why the hell not now this wasn't just any boxing class this was a boxing class and session run by Johnny Nelson. <gasps> now, if you know anything, if you don't know anything about boxing, he's basically. Was it? Is it fair to say that he's the boxing version of Gary Neville for Sky Sports? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was the only person there that had never boxed before or never done anything remotely resembling boxing before, as people who may have seen the subsequent <laughs> videos may agree. <laughs> but so, so I was. Great in, likes, I was Great in likes. the ring Strong. with Johnny Nelson for two 
rounds of two and a half minutes, right? The first round was a, was a pad workout, right? Just me and Johnny Nelson, no one else. Mm. Fucking hell, I was goosed. I was <gasps> goosed about halfway through, but Johnny Nelson's in front of you going, hit me, hit me. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm going to, yeah. You know, the pads. <laughs> I thought, that's it. Oh, I'm, and I remember just collapsing. And I sat down and then went, oh, no, we're doing some more in a minute. The next one was, Johnny took the pads and threw them away. He didn't put them up, did he? No, no, no. No, no. He said, next thing, you'll have to fight me, sir. He, <laughs> said, he said, don't hit me in the head. You've just got to hit me in the stomach as hard as you can. And I went... I'm going to fight him. And I, I'm like, jeez, Louise, this man has won world titles and shit like that. And I am goosed at this point. And for just over two minutes, because I, I honestly, he's just saying, hit me, hit me, hit me. And honestly, as as a piece of exercise, as a piece of mental fatigue, mental zoning in, mental concentration, I have it absolutely was it was almost otherworldly. Yeah. Because I yeah, I think uh, I love boxing now. It's such that's a an physically name. demanding sport. As someone who like used to go to boxing, Never done anything boxing like lessons and stuff like that. Incredibly demanding. I'll boxing. be honest, I'm gonna definitely give it a go again and I would recommend anyone who's never tried it, just go and try it. Go and do something that you haven't done before once. Right, so out. Yeah. Let's rifle through these because let's keep I've it's been a nice positive episode, hasn't it? It's been it? lovely. Uh, it is right, been lovely. Asad, come on, give us your mine out. is being ill on holiday. Oh. Caught, caught a horrific flu off my idiot of a housemate. <laughs> it, you, you pay for the flights, you pay for the Airbnb. I'm in Rome, dying on in, in well, this, it's in obviously this bed. out. Yeah, obviously, because no one wants to be. Are you on okay holiday. now? Yes, although like, yeah, still, I'm still, still, still recovering, but like, yeah, it was pretty brutal. My out is home printers. Oh. It never fucking works when yeah, it needs yeah. to. Never does what you need to. Out, 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 out. Fuck them. Tommy, give us your out. My out is cowards in cars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> on, so, uh, recently I was walking along in Ancoats, and this is one of the reasons I'm moving back to uh, M16 or M21, the, the Chorlton, South Manchester area, because I was walking along in Ancoats, which is a Manchester City area. I'll, I'll give them that. I'm about a mile away from their stadium, but I was wearing a Man United 1997 shirt with Andy Cole on the back. It was, it was quite a warm day, so I just thought... Okay, I'll, I'll have my United shirt on. Traffic was slowing down. Some lads in a taxi. I, I, there was four of them. One of them opened the taxi window, looked at me and screamed, You're fucking hanging, you are. You are hanging, mate. You are fucking ugly as fuck, you cunt. <laughs> Just, and, not necessarily because you're ugly, but because you've got a Man United shirt yeah, on. Let's and just... I, I, I thought, of all the things, of all the things you can say to me, Ugly is not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I am how you say a narcissist. <laughs> no, I, but would, I would be fair to play to you. I would agree with you on that. I wouldn't necessarily call you. But no, but it's not. But you just calling me hanging because your, of the United shirt. Your shirt was a red rag to this Man City ball. Uh, uh, no, and obviously not... you took it and just carried on walking, no? No. <laughs> <laughs> I um, screamed back, fuck off. Yeah. 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 Uh, which I, I thought was fair, dude. He lost his temper. You lost his temper. It's all a bit, bit of good, clean fun in the end yeah, of the day, yeah, isn't yeah. it? I think it's quite... So good. that's why I'm not going to put it out. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you both had your fun. Yeah, yeah we're well, both not bad. It's in. It's in. Sorry. Uh, that is your lot this week. <laughs> Thank you to Spiritland for hosting us once again. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you didn't, Owen and James are back next week. So, you know. Asad, Asad will be back down the country yeah, yeah. lines. Please leave us a review. Please tell your mates. Please tell your parents the other week that review about the dad loving the podcast. Oh, it was amazing. I love that. I love that. Uh, please, please, please by the new issue of our brilliant magazine, mundialmag.com. Head over there. There's some lovely videos. You may have heard a couple of people from those videos in the adverts oh, yeah. for this one as well. So um, listen to what they're saying. Don't just take our word for it. Subscribe to Mundial. We do. We have loads of ways that you can interact and be part of Mundial. Please, please, please spread the word and please get involved. Just quickly also, I wanted to shout out so the lads from football who I play with, uh, younger lads who have, who've all started listening to the podcast. Sporting yeah. Omicida, that is our football team on Thursday nights. They love the podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks yeah. for listening to big up, Ali, a couple big of up, old Jack. twats like me and Owen. A <laughs> couple of uh, uh, less older twats, Tommy and James <laughs> and, and, and this young, young buck. Yeah. Young buck who was fucking seven in, 20, <laughs> in 2007. Anyway, great. that's enough from us. Thank you very much. Love you all. Love you. Bye. See you, man. Reminding you why you love football is a Mundial and Football Co-production. 
produced by Tommy Stewart and Seb White, hosted by me, Owen Blackhurst, and recorded on the run.